trendsetters, welcome to today's Grade 11 Life Sciences show, proudly brought to you by Macmillan. Today we have a special revision lesson on animal nutrition and digestion. We have selected highlights from lessons shown early in the term to help you revise and prepare for your June exams. You can download the notes for today's show from learnextra.co.za forward slash live. Now it's time to get on with today's lesson. Please post your comments and questions on our Facebook page on facebook.com forward slash learn extra or on Twitter at learn extra so we can help you with your revision. We're doing animal nu nutrition. So what I've decided is we need to break it up into specific parts. Okay. Now we're going to start off with uh, mechanical. Okay. Because mechanical is the most important, well, not the most important, but can you imagine trying to swallow an apple without biting it? Have you ever seen an ostrich? An ostrich you can give a whole apple to, and it puts it into its beak, and, it's so, and you see this apple going down its throat. Do you know how sore that must be for me? Right? I've got a small little, little esophagus, so you must understand where I'm coming from. So what I've done, we've got to start off with, uh, with mechanical digestion, or mechanical part of di digestion. Okay? Now, the whole thing that we do is on mammals. We're not looking at reptiles or aves or um, frogs or anything like, like that. We're looking at mammals. It's the most specific thing out. Okay, so what we're going to start off with, you get three types of animals, right? You get carnivores, you get herbivores, and you get omnivores, okay? Now, if we had a look at the, a food chain, right, we start off with plants, which we've done with photosynthesis, Okay, and then we go to herbivores. Okay, so we're going to start off with herbivores. Now, I know that I've got, yeah, here it is, <sighs> nice and simple herbivore. There we go. Okay, I've got these because it's so nice to see things in real life than just on a board all the time, right? So this is a zebra. Okay, it's quite nice. You will see that it looks like it's got teeth missing if I open it up. It has got teeth missing there. But if I turn it this side... It's got no teeth over here whatsoever, okay? Over here, it's got certain teeth, and at the top, it's got certain teeth, and if I turn this over, see all the teeth, okay? Now, each specific teeth does a specific job, okay? Especially on the, carny uh, on the, on the herbivores, okay? Herbivores only eat plants, which means most of the time, all they're going to be doing, right, is going along. Let me put the head back on. They're going along. And this head comes along, there we go, and it grabs grass. So what's it doing in the front? It's cutting the grass off, right? Then it's going in, and then it chews, okay? Now, as it's chewing, it's going through these specific parts here, okay? These are called your premolars and your molars, okay? So they've got teeth in front, which are your incisors. They cut very easily, okay? Then you've got nothing else, because they don't need anything else. And then they've got the grinding, Okay, so I've got this one. As I said, it was a zebra. And I thought, because, you know, to me, this is what life's about. Always bigger is better. Okay, now, sometimes you cannot get a whole jaw. So I've got part of a jaw. So if I have a look, here it is. I just got to move it. Okay, we're going to go with that. Can you believe, what do you think that is? Okay, this animal, it's got these big horns on the top, but it's not like antelope, okay? It's not these horns that spiral like your kudu and your springbuck and all of that. These have got horns on the top, also for fighting, but it's most, it's bone, okay? This has got a very, 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 like very, 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 very long neck, okay? But it's got the same amount of vertebra as what we do, okay? Which means it's the bones in the neck, okay? And if I turn it over, that makes a lot of dust because it's all rubbish inside. But here are its, its teeth as well. They're nice and loose because there's no gums to keep it in. Okay? But have you noticed it's in the bone? Okay? It is in the bone, which is the most important thing out. Okay? So if you go to, uh, I've got more here. You go to a, uh, a dentist or whatever, right? The dentist says, well, these ones we can just pull out. It's nice and easy. And these ones you can't. Now, these ones are difficult to pull out. That's why they're still there. But if I had to do this, just to show you what those look like, okay, I made sure I brought teeth. There they are. That's the part that you're seeing now. This is the part that's actually inside those holes, okay? Now, these don't fit in here, okay?
okay? These are from a different animal, but I brought them along so you can see it. And what they actually do is they go together and they grind, okay? As they're moving, they're grinding along. Now, I know there's a specific one I can pull out. This is the one, I'm sure. There we go. Look at that, okay? It's got little roots, and these roots are difficult to pull out, and they hurt like you have no idea. They actually have sensors inside or um, your nerves to actually give it a bit of life. Right, so when you saw and you have toothache, that's the problem, okay? When you have a bad tooth, which I'll show you, it actually hurts you quite badly because all the nerves are inside. Right, so let's have a look. These are called your molars, right? Then you get your premolars, which are a little bit smaller. And if you have a look, they've got actually got quite a sharp edge. So they're actually almost like cutting, okay? Then if you have a look, let's, let's look at human teeth. Right? I also brought human teeth. These are our molars. Look, nice. Brought some nice molars. Okay, see how nice and big they are? Then I've got your premolars, which are these two. Okay, and look how these have started rotting. They started getting holes in them. Okay, so we made sure that we had these. Okay, here, you won't believe it. This is a canine. Okay, we'll talk about canines later, but look at the hole inside there. Okay, so they do get damaged. There is, um, I brought all different kinds. These are your incisors. They cut, okay? And there's all the teeth that I could find or possibly find in my classroom and all over the place. Right, these are very important. So let me pick them up so we've got space, okay? Now, we've spoken about these animals that we don't see often. We normally see them on TV or if we go to the Kruger Park and places like that. But we haven't spoken about are animals that we actually see all the time, okay? So what about your normal sheep? Now, sheep is quite a nice, I don't have the top of it, but I have the bottom part of the jaw. Now, if you have a look, this is quite strange. If I had a look, let me put this one out of the way so we can show you. If I have a look at this one, I'm gonna take the top jaw off so we can only see the bottom jaw so you can compare it. This here, remember, is a zebra, okay? It's got two teeth in front. They cut the grass, nothing in between, premolars and molars. This one has got exactly the same, but it's got four teeth in the front, okay? Four incisors, if you have a good look, okay? It's four incisors, they're sticking out quite far. They have got slight teeth in front, you can see them over here, okay? And then they've got the premolars, which are the smaller ones, and then they've got the molars at the end, okay? This is your sheep, this is your what do they call it? They, they, they normally say, your horse in pajamas. There we go. The horse in pajamas, it is your zebra. Okay, so that is your carnivores. Now, I'm going to explain all of this on the board a little bit more in detail, but at the moment, I just want you to see it in real life. Okay, now, the next one I've got for you is very simple. It is a carnivore. Now, your carnivores have a specific part. Okay, it's very, very nice carnivores in mammals. They actually have this long tooth, I've got a spare one here, this long tooth, there it is, a nice long tooth. Now that there is a canine, canine. okay? Now, the canine, can you remember you always say your canines are your dogs and that? Now this is a canine, this is there for tearing and ripping meat, okay? And we actually notice this in your lions and your, your, uh, your hyenas and all, they've all got nice big, nice big canines. So I've brought a jaw, teeth are missing again, nice big jaw, of a carnivore, okay? Now, the carnivore has this big tooth in front here. It's still got the incisors in the front, okay? But they have special teeth over here, okay? I'm gonna mention those special teeth later. But these teeth, okay, these teeth are there. If you have a look at it, let me get a herbivore tooth again. Well, I've got some here, okay? Let's have a look. I get a herbivore tooth out here, a nice big one so you can see it. Have a look at that one and have a look at these. Look at the difference. Okay, this one is for grinding, and this one is for tearing. It actually cuts. That tears, that cuts. Okay, it's carnassial, I'm trying to think of the name now. I'll get it later. I know I've got it just somewhere, so I do remember it. But these teeth actually cut it. They cut the meat. So if you watch your dogs, okay, your dogs don't take food into the front of their mouth and then chew it in their back, okay? These guys, they actually go in there pull the meat as they're trying to eat. They've got this whole big carcass and they turn their heads and they cut, they chew on the side of their mouth while their face is still connect, connected to the, car, the, 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 the dead animal, 
okay? Because it needs to cut this whole meat off. Have you ever seen that, Megan? Yeah. It's quite yeah. cool, though, hey? Yeah. Now you know exactly why that. that she does it. Okay? Mm. Those teeth are for cutting, and that's what makes this one so special. Okay, guys, I hope you're enjoying this revision session. If you are struggling and need help, remember to post on the page or send an email to helpdesk at learnextra.co.za. We have got such exciting news for you. From July, a new program starts on Mindset just for you. It's called Connections. We'll chat about the issues that affect your life, your school, and your relationships. We'll have fun. Take your calls and have great prizes up for grabs. Connections from the 1st of July, half past seven in the evening, only on Mindset. For you, by you. Welcome back, guys. I hope you are getting into the idea of revision. Please let us know how you are doing. I'd love to chat to you on the page or on Twitter. Enough of the chat. Let's get back to revision. We've been playing around because we like looking at things. And inside this fact that I showed you earlier, you, you, Tara found a, a, a blood vessel. Right, so she's cut it out so you can see the blood. It's quite nice. There it is. Okay, you can see it's nice and red. Now, not only that, Tara is obsessed with a knife, right? And a pair of scissors. So she cuts as quick as she possibly can. So what she did during the ad break, right, is she cut the stomach open. Now, remember the stomach? If I take it like that, that's what it was. Right, there it is. She took it down. And you know that you guys, some people actually eat, I don't know if it's pork, I'm sure it is, it's beef. I think but it's I don't know if you get sheep. pork, it's beef and sheep. But it's actually called a tripe, right? And you actually eat the stomach. So, mm. Tara, open it up, let's have a look what's inside. Remember I stuck my hands in and got hold of all that yummy food or whatever, right? So, if you grab that side, I'll grab this side. And we can actually, that's what the inside looks like. Okay, get it lower, if you don't mind, there we go. That's what it looks like, if I turn it around, you grab that side, that's the outside, move this out of the way, right? That's what it looks like. So, now let's see what it really looks like. Put it down, I'm gonna bring this up. So, let's dip it in there and give it a bit of a, a rinse to get all that other stuff off. It actually looks like a cloth. It's all yeah. wrinkled like a cloth. It's Sorry, cool. guys, it looks like your face cloth. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. See, now, this is why I do life science. Right? Because I like getting down and dirty and into the grum and all that other rubbish. There you go. So be cool. Squeeze it out. You know, face cloth, you squeeze. Ooh, there's still uh. stuff in there. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> squeeze it out, squeeze it out, squeeze it out. We've got to make sure all the rubbish okay, is out. Soap okay, soap is much better cool. than this. There we go. Put it down. There we go. Let's move this out of the way. Okay. Now. Nice clean stomach. Nice clean stomach. Almost. Almost. Look at this yellow. What, what is this yellow? Right? Well, it's it, not it, food. Let's have a look. It doesn't have that sort of food stone texture. texture. Um, acid, bile. Oh, very nice. And are we starting to have a look at chemicals that are coming in here? Right? And these chemicals. And have a look. Remember, we cut the esophagus. Look at what it looks like when it comes in. Look at that. Sticks her finger in there. Look at the difference. Okay, it's quite nice. And remember your mom says to you, or whoever says to you, chewing gum, right? I remember my mom telling me, chewing gum, you chew chewing gum, it makes you swallow. And it makes you hungry. Uh, hungry. And why does it make you hungry? Because you are playing tricks on your stomach. Exactly. So what's the stomach sending inside there? Acid. Acid. Stomach juice. Very nice. So what does your stomach have to do? Because it, if it adds hydrochloric acid into there, because that's what it gets added in by the stomach. It adds hydrochloric acid in. How are we going to stop hydrochloric acid from burning yourself? Hey, what, what do you think? What would you do? You could drink milk. Yeah, but you don't drink milk after every meal. No, and I don't like milk. What, what does the stomach have that actually keeps it? Isn't okay? it this lining? Because this feels all slimy. Nice. It's a lining. It's right? slimy. Your mom used to say, your stomach lining, you're destroying your stomach lining. Don't do this, don't do that, because you destroy your stomach lining. Now, Ta, while I'm talking, don't you want to see if you can take some of the stomach lining off okay. so we can show them what it looks like and what the muscle around everything looks like while I'm having a chat chat. Now, remember that when you eat, when, when you add food into your stomach, and food has got, it's either a base or it's an acid, right? And you swallow it, and they add hydrochloric, the stomach adds hydrochloric acid to try and break it down. 
okay? And while it's breaking it down, it stays there a bit, and it minches with the food, okay? And uh, becomes charm, and then it gets swallowed into the small intestines, right? Whereas, if you don't eat food, and it starts sending hydrochloric acid into your stomach, what do you think we actually have to do? The hydrochloric is going to start eating something or breaking something down. Okay, and that there starts breaking down your stomach lining. Now, if this I can help, I don't know if you're going to get it. I'm trying, I can't promise. Super slippery. Okay. But I can show you a little bit. There we go, a little bit off. There we go, we're getting there. So there must be lots of layers that yeah. make up your stomach. Because uh, just think about it, it must, hydrochloric acid burns quite a bit. Okay, so you cut it off and, uh, or there you destroy it, and that's it. Then you're going to start eating your stomach. Because remember, you eat meat, okay? So the body is going to stick in some hydrochloric acid to start breaking it down, okay? It does break it down. Now, if it was just the meat there, right, and no stomach lining or this hard stomach inside, it will start breaking or breaking down your stomach. So you're going to be eating your own stomach, in other words. So is that what happens when people get ulcers? When they talk about stomach ulcers and they get burning That's in the it. stomach, is that That's what exactly happens? exactly what it is, Right? You agree? So uh, it can't be pleasant. I've never had one, but no. I believe it's very, very soft. I've got friends that have got one, right? My, my brother-in-law's got one, and, and uh, he doesn't say that it's quite nice. Why don't we grab a tweezers, and we can see if we can pull this up, because I want to get there. Come on. Get in there. Um, there we go. Let's grab tweezers. See if you can pull you it. Cut there. There we go. Wait, there we go. You got it? There. Now I've got some of the stomach lining. Okay, I don't know if you're going to see it so nicely, but I'm going to hook it over there so you can actually see it's white. Or hang it or over that. Hang it over Let's see. this. Come on, there it is. Okay, so there is a part of the stomach lining, if you can see it nicely. And the part of the stomach that you can see that's left. Okay, I'm going to put that down and there it is. Look at it. Okay, look at the difference in color. Okay, this has got this grayish, not gray. Like a yellowy cream, like cream. a yellowy cream color, and this is more of a white color. Okay, this is muscle, right? This is the stomach lining. Okay. Are there two parts of the stomach? Because look at the color. You've got like a pinky color here, and it looks, sorry guys, it looks like mincemeat. And then you've got this part of the stomach that looks like cloth. Yes. So does the stomach have two parts to it? Well, if you have a look at it, it's got to have certain muscles. So let me show it up again. Hold okay. there. Okay. Look at it. If you have a look, this is what Tara was talking about. See, it's got a pinkish, I'll use this. It's got this pinkish there, this dark reddish color. And then here it's got another color, right? A whiter color. So let me see. If I put this down again or close it up, there it is. Okay. This would be down and this would be up. Okay, so the dark sides, if I can pull it open again, where are the dark sides? Over here. They're at the bottom. Okay, they're on the sides. That's the, let's put it flat. That is the biggest sides. Okay, it's the two biggest sides. It's those two big sides, if you can divide it into two. It's the two big sides of the stomach, which means they're the ones that are going to start churning and going crazy. So this okay? is muscle, then. That's more muscle That's than more that muscle is. That's more muscle than that is. So okay, it so actually contracts and muscle. moves. You, you, you get what I'm trying to say? Because this is the biggest me mechanical breakers, right? So if we can okay. pull it out like this again, uh, turn it there. Right. Okay, there we go. You got it. You got it. got it. Hold it nice and tight. Okay, if you have a look at it, okay, there we have a nice red part. There it's a little bit of white. This is the big muscles that actually contract in that. And have a look at this carefully. Look at the texture. The nicest part, ooh. The texture, I've got this thing rubbing against my <laughs> hand. I thought, what is that? It's supper. <laughs> You've got this texture. Now, look at the little, if you look at nice and deep, it's got little ridges in it. Right, can you see it? It's all texture. Cool. That is so cool. Have a look at that, Tara. I don't know if you've seen it. I can see that's the part hand. that I said. It. Actually, I was wrong. It doesn't look like mince meat. It looks like steak. You know those really thin steaks that you get? I think they're called the minute steaks. There we go. That's very cool. Okay, so that is the stomach. Now, the stomach was... One of the best parts. Cool? So, I think what we need to do, we're doing this section by section. We cut off the esophagus. Now, let's cut off <coughs> the stomach. How far up here? Ah, run about there. That's good enough for me. Okay. Go, Vinny, go, are you go. taking this home for supper? 
Ah, uh, not quite. Say, I'll pause. <laughs> You're gonna pause? Come on. I like chicken insides, not pig. You like chicken? Yes. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's where are we good. gonna put the pig? Um, put the, where did we put the, the esophagus? Here. Uh, put or it there. Leave them here. Drop it there, let's go. Now, okay. what comes after the, 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 uh, the stomach? Can you remember? Right? There's two of them. Right? You get, uh, yeah, the small and the large. That is height wise. I'm a baby and I'm younger. She's older than me. So the short, the small, and the, well, the short and the tall, the large, well, the small and the large. It's intestines. Now I want you to look at this very carefully. Now, what is the point of the large, the small intestines? What is the point of this large, the small intestine? Uh, isn't this wrong? the one where all the food, all the good stuff gets absorbed so ah. that your body can use it? So this is for absorption of nu nutrients. Right. Now, if you have a look at me, right. The, my small intestine should be here, in this little area here. Can you, this little area <laughs> here. <laughs> right, so it's in there, okay? This, look how small it can com compact into, right? Can you see it? Compact into a nice small area. Now watch this. I'm going to give Where's you... Where's the end? There, the there's there. Okay. Watch this, watch this. And just drop it there next to you. Go, go, go. Don't be shy. Keep going, keep going. This is all... Okay, this Small thing is never going to end. Intestines. Okay, this is long. Okay, we're still going. Now remember, the reason, oh, the most important thing of the small intestine is oh. for absorption of nu nutrients. Why do we eat? We need nutrients. And this is its job. Can you be, look at this. This is ridiculous. I think my arm's hey? going to fall off first. This is this absolutely is ridiculous. My word. Right, now we're nearly at the end. Almost there, the almost end. there. And stop. Okay. No, wait, go, go. Oh, no. Lying. Look at this. Stop. Oh. There we go. Up to there. What is this? Okay. I will get to that. That okay. is, there's a reason why I didn't cut it away. I will get to that just now. That's a very important thing. But look how long back? that is. Let's bring it back so we can cut right in the beginning. Okay. So this is your small intestines. Now your small intestines is there for absorption of nutrients. Okay. It's its function. Now, we haven't cut this open yet. We had a bit of a clean because I had to clean it up because if I didn't clean the large and the small intestine out, right, we would not be able to stand here anymore no. because it will stink to high heavens. Right, so let's have a look at this. Tara, can you slice this small intestine into two parts for me so we can actually have a look what it looks like. Do you want it down the inside. middle or am I just cutting well, a piece off? Well, let's cut a piece off first. Okay. Okay, because it's always nice to get there. Thank you, because this guy's Stabilizing. Slippery. Right. There we go. And I think it'll be easier with a pair of scissors, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're cutting this off. And we're going to find out what it looks like on the inside. Okay, it's always nice to look. But remember that what you see might not look exactly like your teacher's telling you. Okay, and I'm going to explain why. Because it's very important to understand the process. Okay? This is almost as slimy as the stomach was inside. Oh, that's nice to so know. So is that because the same juice goes down exactly. into now the we start small getting intestine? Extra juices coming along. Okay. Oh, Ooh, I think we've got some leftover food that you didn't clean out last oh, night. Oh, that's all right. It's good to show. And nearly done. There we there go. We go. Okay, so now we've got the small intestines. You grab the top. I'll grab the bottom. Okay, we're opening it up. It's always good to open up. There it is. Look at that. That's the small intestines okay i'm coming to the front so i can show you i can also see what is going on okay now look how slimy and it actually looks so smooth look at that it's like a dark color right remember it's also got to have this thing to stop this um it's got this 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 um the the like a membrane almost hey to stop elect the, to stop acids from burning it right and now I just need to tell you this because this was this is unbelievable and you might not believe it and you, people might say it to you but you never listen to it you never understand it what do us as humans use the small intestines for of a pig can anybody answer that question for me twisting it around there just to play around with it because I like the feel of it but what do we use the small intestines for as humans Okay, does that make sense? Not the pig's intestines. What do they use it for? Now, 
let's understand what the inside looks like. If I take the inside of this and I spread it out again, I just want to get it nice, get rid of all this fat again, simply just fat there, it's out of the way. Okay, I want to pull that across, I want to split that open, right? Chef, me, do you see that? The skill. Taking it nice. I out. don't know how nice it's going there to taste, go. but you can practice. There, that's it. Okay, now nah, there you can hold it out now. That's it. Okay. Can you can you see that? Now, that there. If it feels will. the same on both sides. Is okay. that right? Well, how about this? You put that down for two seconds. Okay. Um, can you? You as bad as me. What Let's do you need? open it up. I'll clean it later. Uh, I need another dissecting needle, which is over here. Okay. Okay, the reason why I'm doing that, give it up there. No, I will do it on the Not same size. One. Grab, grab, push it in, push it in. Okay, nice and deep. Okay, did I use the right side or did I try? Oh, yes, I did. So it's that side. I want to stick it in. This one, okay. stick it in. There Here we, we go. go. Hold those down. Does that look better? Hopefully you can see it now. Right. You can see that nicely now. Now you can see the cream color and how smooth and soft it actually is if you're looking at it nice and carefully. But what you see there is not the truth that's lying to you. Okay? That is lying to you. Can you believe that that's lying to you? Right? Well, how can it be lying to you? This is what we cut up. Yes. But you're not seeing. Your eyes are deceiving you, which is cool. Right? Can you believe that? Why? Because your eyes can only see so much. Right? Us, we need to know more. And the more we know, the better. Okay, so let's take this into consideration. Okay, just this piece, this length. So if I do that, okay, well, let me do it this way. There. See, it's the length of my hand. Well, the breadth, the breadth. Right, so the breadth of my hand. There it is. You can see it. Hey, what do you think? That's the breadth of my hand. So it's that long. Okay, now, I want you to imagine that each and every, just the top piece, just this top piece here, okay, it can absorb a certain amount. So let's say a particle is the size of the edge of this, this uh, dissecting needle, this top piece. So let's see, I can get one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen pieces or eighteen little edges, right? Eight again. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Well, nineteen. Let's say nineteen. We'll add one on just for the fun of it, right? Just to add it. But there is nineteen of it. Okay. Now. That is if it was actually flat. Okay, it's getting sticky now. But what that actually looks like, it's not actually flat. Okay, that little piece that we saw there is actually, if I did it, it actually, nice, if you look under a microscope, it looks like little fingers, like, like, like this. Okay, and the reason why it looks like little fingers, it's called, what do we have in there? Villi. Villi, very nice. They're called little villi. Okay, now villi are protrusions. They're like finger-like things, right? Okay, they've got little, little fingers, right? Now, I want to know, right? You, um, I, I think we need an ad break because I need some water. But before I go there, I want to know during your break, why do I say there's, there's um, finger-like protrusions and we cannot see them? Please give me a reason why we cannot see the finger-like protrusion called villi. Right. Now it's time for a break, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back from the break. I know you can't wait for the term to end and the July holidays to start. And of course, that means winter school. This year, we will be repeating all the term to learn extra live shows for you from the 24th till the 28th of June from 9 a.m. in the morning till 7 p.m. at night. So don't miss out. Go to our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn forward slash extra forward slash winter school to get all the details and to download the notes for each lesson. But for now, let's get back to today's revision lesson. Over to you. Now, of course, question. The most important part of life science. 
the way we try and confuse you by asking stupid things. Always. Hmm. It's like, what color is my shirt? Or what color is um, bouncing off my shirt that you see? It's the same thing. It's still purple. Yeah? It's just the way we ask it to confuse you. Must know your stuff very well. Okay, let's have a look. Give the correct word or term for each of the following. The process whereby food is eaten. Okay? I'm not talking about mechanical digestion. I'm not talking about uh, chemical digestion. The part where we take food off the cake, isn't it? Cake, yes. Cake on a fork in the mouth. What is that part called? Okay? That is ingestion. We're taking the food into our mouth. Right. So that's the first one. The process whereby food is eaten is in ingestion. Right. Nice and easy. Now, let's have a look at the next one. The substance stored in the gallbladder. Remember that yellow stuff on that liver. Can you remember? That is the gallbladder. Now, I want to know what we store in there. Remember, it's made up of uh, proteases, 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 long day. Proteases, it's made up of lipase, it's made up of um, lip, lipase, lipase, and um, what's the other one to do with milk? Lact lactase. Lactase. But you see, you're on the ball today. Hello. And lac <laughs> lactase, right. It's made up of that. Can you remember what it was? Okay, and once that is, is added, we start, start breaking everything down. Everything starts breaking down, the most important things. Right, so what is it called? It is called bile. Okay, very nice. Ah, <laughs> yeah, Luna there, bile, she's screaming like it's going out of fashion. I mean, Chris, she's learning something like I was. Right, so bile is stored in the gallbladder. Very nice. Now, this is a good one. The wave-like contractions of the esophagus. I actually love that word esophagus. Hey? Yeah, it it's sounds like very just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> right. Esophagus, the wave like motions. Now, guys, you've got to understand something very important. The answer to this big words. Well, this the wave like constructions of the esophagus. Okay? The answer to that is very simple. Okay? It's peristalsis. Now the reason why I'm stopping here is that Whenever I say to my boys, give me an explanation of peristalsis, what do you think they do? It's very simple. So I know the answer. It's this. That's not, what is this? Can you tell me what this is? <laughs> this is pulling something and putting one hand in front of it means nothing. Okay? It means absolutely, this means nothing. You need to use this to explain to me what it is. Okay, are you going to write in your test one day, well, it's one hand squeezing and the other one relaxing and then the next hand and then it joins one in front of the other because that's what you're showing me. It's a very simple thing. It is a wave-like construction of the esophagus or it's a wave-like motion made from the muscles moving antagonistically or contracting and relaxing antagonistically to each other. Very important. Okay, so that we understand each other. Nice. There we got the breakdown of excess amino acids by the liver. Now, I did not tell you this. I want you to remember this. Excess. Must understand, must understand something very nicely. That amino acids are brilliant for us. But too much is actually very bad. Because what actually happens is, if it starts breaking down, you're going to get ammonia. And ammonia is poisonous to the body. So what the liver does, the liver is a big man. He stands there and he goes, okay, you're not coming in. That's it, plain and simple, right? So he says, uh, sorry, amino acids, there are too many of you. And he starts breaking it down. Okay, now that is very, very, very important. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I want to see how clever you are on this one because I haven't mentioned it. I want to know, and I will wait for it right to the end. I want to know what is it called, this is it, it's very simple, when the liver breaks down excess amino acids. 
Okay, because I can give you all the answers. All the stuff I've given you is there. I want to know if you know. It's a nice word. Okay, now, next one. A group of enzymes that break down protein. Breaks down protein. Enzymes that break down protein, and I keep saying this word, and it keeps somehow sounding wrong to me today, but it is absolutely right. Mm. It's protease. Okay, and if I have a look, just to make sure that you know it exactly, there it is. Protein. Oh, pen. Protease. I know that you can't see that very nicely, I'm sure. So I'm going to use green. Protease. There it is. Okay, very nice. Now, next one. Next one, the form in which glucose is stored in the liver. It's glycogen. Remember that, glycogen, I was explaining it to you. Now, I want to get onto this part, which is quite cool. The comparison between an omni a herbivore and an omnivore. Now, before we carry on, Rina, do we know what that answer is? It's deamination. D. Emanation. That's the emanation. Yes. Very nice. Who was that? Bonga and Bafana got it right. Whoa! You brilliant. The emanation. Very, very nice. <laughs> the breaking down of excess amino acids. Right. So now, remember, I said to you guys, we were gonna do the pig. We're gonna dissect the pig. Why did we do the pig? Main reason is because it's an omnivore. And what are we? We are omnivores. Okay. I didn't want to do the sheep because it's not the same. It's a herbivore. And I didn't want to go out and catch myself a saber-toothed tiger because it is a, 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 a carnivore. Right, so let's have a look at this. This is a nice thing. It says, um, complete the thing in your textbook, yada, yada, yada. And then it says, compare herbivores, as soon as I get a nice pen, compare the herbivores nutrition and the carnivore nu nutrition. Okay, so let's go. Example of a mammal herbivore. Me, I like, if I can just do that, I like cow. Hey, what do you think? Yeah, a cow's cow. Good. <laughs> right? And another animal, a cat. Nice and simple, right? Let's see. The size and shape of a canine. When have you seen a cow walking around with these two things? Have you ever seen it? No. Huh? <laughs> Walks and it bites you in the leg because it's not happy with what you're feeding it, which is grass. Right? So, it's missing. It doesn't have it. Right? And then, what does the cat have? If you have a look at the cat, they've got nice big ones. They're nice and long. They're nice and thin so that they can tear the meat very easily. Right? And they are sharp. Main, very, 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 very important. Then, the size of the molars, the cows are flat and large. And the carnivore, which of course is your cat, has mainly got your carnassial teeth, right, instead of your, um, your molars. And then, of course, feeding two things, I made it here, long digestive system, because it's got to break down uh, your, your plant stuff. And lastly, it's got an ap uh, your appendix, which breaks down cell cellulose. Your cat has got a short digestive system, and it does not have an appendix. Hopefully, I've left you with a lot of thought. Okay, this is on the net, am I right? And yes. you can have a look at it. There are more questions. Go through it and see if, see if you can answer it. Now it's time for a break. So don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back, Mindsetters. In case you missed my news, starting in July, we have a new program that is going to get you talking. What's on your mind? What are the issues you deal with? How can we help you? Connections will help you with all that and more, so make sure you catch it. For a fun and youthful look at life, connect with us on Connections. But right now, let's do some more revision. Okay, first of all, I'm going to turn it and we're going to go and explain what homeostasis is. Now, homeostasis is this huge, huge word for saying balance. Now, everything in our body, every little thing, has got to be a balance, okay? If we have, um, if it's very cold outside, right, we want to balance inside to make sure that it's a simple or a certain temperature. So, let's see. If it's a hot day, let's make it hot day rather, right? And 
Inside, you've got to have a certain temperature, but outside it's hot. What happens to your skin? Look at your skin carefully on a hot day. What do you see? Looney, do you know what you see? What do you see on men on a hot day? Sweat. No, not, not, not the sweat. The sweat's good. Yes, the sweat's very good. <laughs> but what do you normally see? The, ve the veins, am I right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, veins That's... all over the place. Now, why do you think there's veins all over the place? Okay, that blood comes from deep down inside us, right? It gets pushed to the skin, and when it's at the skin, the air blows over it, and we're cooling this skin, right? Or we're cooling the blood that's running across. That's the first thing. We need to keep our bodies at a certain temp temperature, okay? So we cool it. Sweat, okay? The reason why we sweat is we put liquid on top of our, our skin, and when it evaporates, it makes us a bit cooler. We gotta keep cool. So the body is actually trying its hardest to keep everything equal. Okay, so let's have a look at it. <coughs> homeostasis, there it is, big word. Learn to spell it, because you're gonna have to spell it. Right, so homeostasis is the ability of the body to maintain, very important, maintain, right, a constant internal environment response. Uh, well, let me put this right. It's how your body reacts to the environment. It's got to be even inside all the time. So what do we have? Okay, homeostasis, the control of homeostasis, uh, homeostasis, geez, it's going to be a long day, homeostasis throughout the, uh, is secreted by hormones. So what we actually do, I'm going to put this nice and easy. Hormones are the ones that control everything. Now, hormones are the coolest thing in your body. They come from the endocrine system. Okay, now, if you remember carefully, we spoke about uh, the pancreas. Can you remember the pancreas in di digestion? It sends off that pancreatic juices. Remember that stuff? Looney, can you remember it? When I did that dissection, we saw that pig had that huge pancreas. Can you remember? Mm -hmm. Now, that there, okay, has got certain cells. They're called alpha and beta cells. Now, inside those cells, each one makes a certain thing. Your beta cells create insulin right and your alpha cells create glucagon now those two things are very important in our systems okay they regulate specific things and it's very important to keep those specific things going strong and i'm going to show you how we're going to do that well we're not going to be able to do it but i'm going to show you how to monitor it for some people okay so your nervous system of course your nervous system if you hot okay your nerves are going to tell your body to do something for example <coughs> if inside your body, right, you have, it's a hot day and you need to keep water, your body's starting to lose too much water, okay, what you have in your, I'm going to use big words because you're going to need this in my trick one day, so just listen and try and understand it, okay, in your, your uh, pituitary gland, you have this, this hormone called ADH, okay, ADH gets secreted by the pancreas, uh, by, by the pituitary gland. The pituitary, it goes all the way to the kidneys. At the kidneys, it goes into the loop of Henle and the convoluted tubules and all that inside there, and it tells them, listen, but do not get rid of the water. Keep it, because we need it. We need as much water as possible. So if you have a look at it, on a hot day, your urine is normally very yellow. On a cold day, it's very see-through. The reason why it's very yellow is because there's ADH, in your body, right? The hormones going all over the place. It's grabbing all the water. It's not sending it to the bladder. So there we go. So all of that tells you that we are keeping water. On a cold day, we've got a thing called your adrenal glands, right? And in your adrenal glands, we secrete aldosterone. And aldosterone says, but we need to get rid of water as quick as possible. Okay, so they work. They, they, there's a whole system in your body to make sure that your body is at its peak thing all the time. Okay, so your nerves pick that up. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Okay, your nervous system receives information about the uh, internal environment. Simple, we all know that. Then I mentioned the endocrine system is where you get all your um, hormones. Okay, your endocrine system controls the secretion of hormones. Okay, Must, it'll either say you need to send this or you need to send that. Okay. Or we need to hang this a bit back because we need something else. It just controls it. It's the managing system inside the body, right? Okay, and the result of the nervous impulse. So what it does is the nerve tells it, okay, um, it's too hot. Let's send all the blood vessels to the skin, okay? Or um, it's 
too much water or it's too hot, we need to keep the water, we send L, uh, we, we'll send ADH, okay? Antidiuretic hormone, by the way, ADH. Okay, cool. So, have you noticed how that works? Okay, now, I'm going to come a little bit down. For example, in homeostasis, we need to keep things in homeostasis means that your body will work at its optimum level. So, homeostasis, example of homeostasis processes are temperature, which I've been talking about, am I right? Temperature is what I'm talking about. Glucose, you haven't heard, or blood glucose levels, you've heard me talk about glucose levels, but without even no noticing it, okay? And then, of course, your pH level of the blood and body fluids. Can you remember the pH level where amylase in the mouth, right? goes down to the stomach where it's very acidic because you're adding hydrochloric acid and then it goes into the small intestines and when it's in the small intestines we can't have hydrochloric acid because it'll burn our stomachs so what do we add we add an alkaline system can you remember all of this this is all very important okay so there we're using different pH levels and we're balancing it out at how the body sends certain things certain places now let's have a look at this I brought this here because this is the best way I can show you okay this is called a negative feedback system, okay? So let's have a look. It's a negative, right, feedback loop. It means when the one works, the other doesn't, and when this one works, this one doesn't. So let's have a look at it. Okay, <coughs> glucose, your normal glucose level. So that's what we're working with round about now. That's what I'm like at now. I'm at my normal glucose level, how much glucose I've got in my body, right? Okay, but before I go there, what I want to do, I'm going to stop there for two seconds. I brought something along because the reason why I'm doing it now, because I need time. Time is of the essence in this, right? I brought something along. I've got a good friend. I've told you about him, Andrew, right? He's diabetic, okay? And he's given me his glucose test. So every time he eats, he's got to test his glucose. If his glucose is very high, he needs to inject himself with insulin and so on and so on and so on. So let's have a look what this thing looks like. Okay, we've got a box. Okay, let me come and... Stand over here so you can actually see what's going on. Okay, we've got a box. Here's the box, and we've got this funny little thing. Now, this funny little thing is an injection. Okay, now remember, you normally change needles all the time. So I'm going to change needles too, because I'm going to prick myself, as I said. If I open the box, you have certain things. You have these little white things here. Yeah? They are called the needles. Okay, you've got this here, which is your testers. So I can pull one out so you can have a good look at it. Okay, that's what it looks like. Okay, this side, it's got that side. Okay, trying to keep it, there we go. And on this side, you'll see there's an orange um, little plate. Now that little orange piece is where we put things on. Now, that's the, the tester. I'm gonna put this one side. I'm gonna close this so I can put it one side. <coughs> there we go, we're gonna use that in a couple of minutes. Okay, then we've got this machine. Now this machine picks it all up, okay? This machine is very important. Without this, this whole system is worthless. Okay, so hopefully you can come in nice and, and close. Okay, first of all, you normally load it by twisting this one. You can hear it there, twist. Let me just listen carefully. Can you hear it? That there shoots the needle out this little hole over here and into the finger. So I was going to be brave. Right. Pull the needle. You can see that the needle is closed, you cannot see where the needle is, okay? Remember, needles are very important. Once you've used it, you throw it away. Remember, you don't use needles with anybody else. Very, very, very important, okay? So, let's have a look. I'm going to untwist this. There we go. The needle goes inside there, push it in, okay? The top, twist and pull out. Let's get it out. Can you see the needle? Okay, it's nice and small. There it is. Let's see if I can get some white behind it. Can you see the needle? It's very small. Okay. Then I'm going to put this in, this on. Twist. And it's ready to go. Now, nerves. What I'm going to do is I'm going to prick my one finger. Okay. Firstly, before I do that, this thing goes inside here. Okay. You'll see there's little arrows and that gets pushed in there. Now, I'm not going to push it in too far, because once I've put that in, it asks at a certain time for my blood. Right. So I've got a certain amount of seconds to find out my blood. So let's go. <laughs> let's make sure it's on three. <laughs> I was told to put on three because I'm not a wuss. And go. Here we go. Here we go. 
that wasn't very nice. See, here comes the blood. You can all see it. There we go. We wipe the first bit away because we don't know what's going on there. Let's see if I push this in nice and go. You'll see it goes on. Okay. It's waiting. It's waiting. Come on. There it says for the blood. Can you see it says for the blood? Okay. I'm going to put my blood on there. Here we go. It seeps it in nicely. Let's see. And it says thinking, waiting, waiting, patience. Okay. Let's see. There we go. Let me just have a look. Mine is 6.3. Now, 6.3 is high. It's actually very high. Okay. Now, I have had some chocolates and <laughs> I have had some things, but 6.3 is, 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 is all right. It's not bad. Okay. Normally, they say when you get to about 8, I'm going to pull that up because I need to get rid of it for now. I'm just going to put it one side. They normally say that at about 8, you are very clever. Okay, because your brain functions at that. The sugar levels in your brain work so well. But the problem is it's very poisonous for your body. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you about what actually happens now. Okay, right now I'm going to say I'm normal. I'm going to pretend I'm normal. But I've got this stuff. Looney, what do you think this is? Glucose. You think this is glucose. So what I'm going to, come over here, and I'm going to bring you across, and I'm going to, let you no 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 oh. just just a finger yeah, yeah girl girl oh it's condensed milk it's what have a taste mm. it's condensed milk <laughs> and I love condensed milk right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drink as much as I can you're gonna drink it yes of course and we're gonna see if the the, the levels rise isn't that quite cool yeah you're Kay. gonna be on a sugar rush we're gonna be on a sugar <laughs> rush so we want to see if what I'm doing works okay so would you like a sip? A sip. No, thank you. I'm Good fine. Girl. Thanks. I'm so, so <laughs> I want you to have a look at the board. Okay. It's very sweet. Normal sugar level, that's where I am at the moment. Am I right? If glucose increase, in other words, hmm. it's a lot of glucose. If the glucose levels increase, okay, it becomes poisonous to my body because a lot of glucose is actually very, very poisonous for us, okay? So the pancreas, there it is, the pancreas receptors, pick this up, it says, hold on, but there's too much sugar in your body, okay? It goes to the liver, it sends it to the liver, okay? It first gives more insulin, okay? It gives off your insulin levels. Your insulin changes glucose into glycogen, sorry. I'm trying to drink as much as I can. <laughs> it's very sweet. So, your insulin levels increase, and once it's increased, it starts taking, insulin makes your cells accept glucose, right? And it changes glucose into glycogen. Cool. Once it's got it to its normal state again, okay, once its, it's insulin comes, it changes the glucose into glycogen, it sends it to the liver, okay? Once it's in the liver, it makes it back into its normal glucose levels. Right, so we're happy with that. Now, I've uh, decided I'm not gonna eat it. Well, I'm gonna eat more, but you go for a run, okay? Now, the first bit, you've got so much glucose. I've had condensed milk and we've got so much glucose, and then we deplete all our glucose. What actually happens? Have a look, okay? Glucose levels are normal, okay? They decrease. In other words, I've got no more glucose, okay? So we go back to those receptors. Those, those receptors, glucose decrease, of course. Those receptors send something else, okay? It sends glucagon. Now, glucagon works opposite to insulin. Let me have another sip. I think that should work by now. Hey, what do you think, Lumi? I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so what happens is glucose changes into glucagon, gets sent to the liver, and then we have normal levels again. We've come to the end of today's show. Thanks to Macmillan for making the show possible and thank you for joining me and for participating in this revision session. Remember to join us for winter school from the 24th till the 27th of June when we will be repeating all the Learn Extra live shows from term two. We will be back with live shows from the 15th of July for term three lessons.